Hello, this module, the blood flow meters, I am presenting on behalf of Professor and Dr. K. K. Deepak, Head of the Department, Department of Physiology, Ames, New Delhi. This is a lecture on the methods of measurement of blood flow. The objectives of these modules are introduction, importance of blood flow measurement, parameters of blood flow measurement, techniques of blood flow measurement and finally the summary. The blood circulation includes a set of pump and large series of connected vessels called the arteries and veins. The left side of the heart pumps the blood through the arteries to the entire body which then returns back to the right side of the heart through the veins. The upper portion shows the pulmonary circulation. We can divide the human circulation into two compartments. The systemic compartment which is comprised of circulation to all the organs except the lungs. The flow velocity and the pressures are very high in this compartment compared to the second compartment which is called the pulmonary circulation. The pulmonary circulation is a low pressure compartment. The total amount of volume flow is equal in both of them. The average velocities in iota, pulmonary artery and the vena cava are in the range of 11 to 13 centimeter per second. Although peak velocity may differ significantly. In this slide, it shows some normal values of blood flow measurements. The total blood flow to the body is about 5 liter per minute. This is called the cardiac output. The same amount goes to lungs as well. The velocity of blood varies in different vessels depending on pressure and diameters as seen here. Also different organs needs different amount of blood flow depending on their needs. Therefore, it is a beautiful arrangement. Let me give you some examples. The heart has the highest oxygen consumption per tissue mass of all human organs. The resting coronary blood flow is 250 ml per minute. This represents 5 percent of the cardiac output. The renal blood flow is the volume of blood delivered to the kidneys per unit time. In humans, both the kidneys receive roughly 25 percent of cardiac output amounting to 1.1 liter per minute in a 70 kg adult male. The amount of blood that the cerebral circulation carries is known as cerebral blood flow. In an adult, cerebral blood flow is typically 750 milliliters per minute or it is 15 percent of the cardiac output. The blood flow measurement is important for both research and for clinical purposes. The blood flow is important marker of the functionality of an organ. It is also true that when blood supply is reduced to the organ, the organ shows reduced performance. This slide gives some examples of altered blood flow in health and diseases. I am sure that you know the most important cause of abnormality of blood flow is atherosclerosis. The atherosclerosis actually blocks the artery and blood flow to the area supplied is reduced and so the functionality. If atherosclerosis affects the vessels of leg then the toes and gradually foot becomes necrosed. The slide shows the appearance of foot in cases of severe atherosclerosis 
or any other abnormality of artery supplying the foot. Most of the time, amputation is the only answer. What happened to the foot in the previous slide may also happen to hands. The hands being peripheral organ may show a gradually loss of function or loss of normal color and necrosis. Here is a question to you. Which habit causes damage to the blood vessels and decreased blood flow in them? The smoking is such a major insult to blood flow that it may result all sort of serious insults to vital organ and also to peripheries. So what are the conditions and situations where blood flow measurement is required? Here is a small list, by no means a complete one. In general, blood flow measurement is an important tool to study the effect of physiological variables like exercise, gravity or cognitive task on blood flow to whole body or a particular organ. Also, the measurement is required for detecting the effect of drugs, transplantation and grafts. In general, by measuring blood flow, one can predict tissue functionality. There are several parameters which can be determined while measuring blood flow. If we consider the whole body as one organ, then the volume flow to whole body can be measured. This is called cardiac output. You can measure blood flow in a given conduit artery in terms of velocity or volume flow rate. The blood flow to the given region can also be measured which may include several tissue or even organs. The blood flow to the given single organ is also an important measure. Blood flow to the small area of the tissue can also be determined and indicates local functioning. This is called microcirculation. I will explain the difference between velocity and flow. Blood velocity refers to the distance the blood moves over time. This measurement is often given as centimeter per second. Blood flow rate is expressed as amount of blood flow to per 100 gram or tissue of an organ per unit of time. This can also be expressed for whole organ. This is represented by the symbol Q sometimes and expressed as ml per second. The difference between velocity and flow is simple. Velocity refers to the distance the blood moves over time. Flow refers to the movement of a volume of blood over time. Here are some examples of blood flow measurements. Please go through it carefully. The blood flow measurement techniques may be divided into two non-invasive and invasive. Most commonly used techniques in the non-invasive category are plethysmography and Doppler. The techniques which uses the principles of electromagnetic flow meters and radio level injections fall under the invasive category. This is important slide which gives the information on basic principle that work for measuring blood flow. The following the flowing blood results in several changes such as movement of RBCs and other cells, geometric changes such as volume and diameter of the organ. Further, 
at times especially in the peripheries the blood flow causes change in temperature the blood flow also causes change in oxygen contents amount of oxyhemoglobin and certain metabolic changes all this can be detected by different sensors and this provides a measure of blood flow further the blood flow may be measured by including certain changes in blood physical properties or tissues as listed here kindly go through this list carefully we will be talking about them in details among the list as shown before there are various non invasive techniques for the measurement of cardiac output we can use impedance plethysmography for measurement of blood flow to extremities we can use impedance plethysmography and volume plethysmography for measurement of blood flow to organ we can use sonography or ultrasonography laser doppler blood flow metry nmr blood flow metry near infrared spectroscopy and pet the invasive techniques most of the time are more reliable and serves as a gold standard technique for measurement of cardiac output we can use thermodilution technique or fit method using oximetry the invasive techniques used to measure blood flow to individual organs include injection of labeled substances or radio isotopes and the organ is imaged by using pet or mri or a gamma camera there are specific substances used for specific organs this is the list of techniques which can be described in detail soon the plethysmography means measuring the volume in the three insets shown below there are three techniques shown these are versatile techniques currently used to measure blood flow the photo plethysmography technique actually indicates blood flow although it is commonly used for oxygen saturation in critical care monitoring by using photoplethysmography combined with computational techniques volume blood flow can be computed for the given area the impedance plethysmography technique will be described in details the volume plethysmography by using water or air displacement is a standard teaching tool for students of physiology the impedance plethysmography technique uses very small non perceivable current and is entirely safe this is ejected into the body at a very high frequency in the range of 50 to 100 kilohertz blood is very good conductor of current and is the only thing which is changing in the area thus the change in the impedance offered by a segment of the body is proportional to the flow of blood within that segment this slide give you the setup for recording of blood flow to calf area by using impedance plethysmography this technique provides not only the measure of percentile blood flow but also give the provision of calculating the change in resting blood flow in two conditions the oscillating blood flow has been used to calculate the blood flow variability the barc and aims new delhi has carried out large work in this area in india this is available in the given reference 
since impedance plethysmography measures the volume flow to the area therefore when the electrodes are placed across chest the measurements provide the value of cardiac output this is called impedance cardiography this has been validated with standard techniques like thermodilution and fick method the middle trace shows the typical graph or the typical record of thoracic impedance waveform from which cardiac output can be calculated by using well established equations the electrodes for thoracic impedance cardiograph may be of various types and can be placed vertically horizontally or one can use spot electrodes and place them in different configurations this slide shows typical vertical placement of silver braided wire electrodes for the sake of convenience many researchers use ecg type spot electrodes this shows typical graphic user interface of impedance cardiac plethysmograph this was developed by bhava atomic research center shortly called as barc in india we validated the barc impedance plethysmograph equipments at our autonomic and vascular function lab in the department of physiology here a typical setup is shown for recording cardiac output monitor in various physical conditions the impedance plethysmography is a simple and versatile technique it is also used to measure global or focal brain blood flow this is called rio encephalography the electrode placement uses 1020 system of electrode placement another form of plethysmography uses air water displacement as measure of volume changes in limbs the functionality of penis is also measured by penile plethysmograph which either uses volumetric air chamber or strain gauge to measure the circumferential diameter this uses a mercury in rubber or indium or gallium in rubber ring for mechano electrical transduction a corresponding device in women in the vaginal photoplethysmograph and this uses photoelectric transducers ultrasound is being used extensively in hemodynamic measurement for measuring blood flow the ultrasonography most commonly uses the doppler shift principle to measure blood velocity the flowing blood causes a change in the pitch of the reflected sound waves normally a pulse doppler ultrasound is applied by a transducer and the same transducer serves as an detector for returning echo besides the particle speed in blood the doppler flow meter measurements are also influenced by other variables such as distribution of blood cells within the vessel and the transducer beam angle so there are two methods which ultrasonography applies for measurement of blood flow first based on doppler shift principle and the second based on calculation of transit time i will describe each one in detail this setup shows a schematic diagram to record blood flow by using ultrasonic doppler the doppler ultrasound is not only used for measurement of the absolute value of blood velocity and volume but it also helps in visualizing the blood flow 
The probe in this imaging equipment is mechanically coupled to position resolver, which makes electrical output. Imaging is done by moving the probe on the surface of the skin and developing a 3D image using a computer. Thus, it is possible to construct anterior and posterior lateral and cross-sectional scans of blood vessels. The ultrasound Doppler can be used to measure cerebral blood flow. This is called as transcranial Doppler. By combining the imaging technology and flow measurement technology, one can use the blood flowing through vessel structures. Also, color Doppler makes it easy to visualize the forward and reverse flows by using different colors. As told before, there is another technique for calculating fluid velocity by using ultrasound. This is based on calculations of transit time. The transit time flow meter depends only on the fluid velocity. Independent of the flow pattern, red blood cell distribution and probe angle. Further, this method has good repeatability and reproducibility. The working principle of transit time method is that the time required for an ultrasound pulse to propagate through a given distance in a moving medium is a function of the vectoral sum of the pulse propagation velocity and the medium velocity. The laser Doppler flow metry is a powerful technique to measure microperfusion, especially in the skin or any given surface. This is similar to ultrasound Doppler, except that it uses laser waves instead of ultrasonic waves to quantify blood flow. The beam from a low power laser from a laser diode penetrate the skin sufficiently to be scattered with the Doppler shift by red blood cells. The returning laser is captured by a laser detector. This method is called laser Doppler velocimetry or laser Doppler anemometry. This shows typical setup for laser Doppler flowmetry. As told earlier, this technique is valuable for quantification of microcirculation in a small area. Microcirculation is usually defined as blood flowing in small arteries usually less than 150 meter in diameter, arterioles, capillaries and venules. It plays a crucial role in physiological processes of tissue oxygenation and nutrient exchange. This is also important for studying initial changes in pathogenesis of a disease. Another form of laser-based techniques is video microscopy. This technique can be used for visualization of microcirculation. This involves orthogonal polarization and spectral imaging, nuclear magnetic resonance or in short NMR. NMR is used for blood flow metry in various organs and tissues. The nuclear magnetic resonance technique is based on the measurement of behavior of the hydrogen atoms of water present in blood. Due to magnetic moment of the hydrogen atom, the nucleus behaves as a small magnet. This nucleus can be excited by externally applied high pressure magnetic field. Therefore, when allowed to relax, the hydrogen nuclei orient themselves to produce a net parallel alignment to a steady magnetic field. Thus, the orientation of H atoms will depend on the blood flow. This changed orientation will result in magnetization of the hydrogen atoms. The voltage induced in the coil is proportional to velocity and area of vessel carrying the blood. Therefore, 
the velocity of blood can be recorded when captured in a temporal sequence along with flow all vessels can also be imaged thus the enema technique helps in structural imaging and determination of functional properties of blood vessels shown here is angiogram of neck vessels going to brain thermal based techniques are also used for measuring blood flow the principle is simple the blood in central pool is always warmer than the peripheral organ at most room temperatures and in colder environments therefore when blood flows to the periphery it creates a gradient of temperature the thermal image of peripheral organ can indicate the pattern of blood flowing in them if there is inhomogeneity like patchy distribution of blood flow then it can be detected by thermography several autonomic disorders give this kind of presentation and thermography is useful for autonomic testing the thermal technique can be used to determine blood flow through organs also it is commonly used to determine the blood passing through the heart the measure is known as the cardiac output as we have discussed earlier this is expressed as liters per minute it is determined by four steps first a known amount of ice cold dextrose solution is injected into the right atrium second the temperature of blood is detected distally by a thermistor several centimeters from the end of pulmonary artery catheter third the change in blood temperature detected in the thermistor depends on the volume flow and finally the cardiac output is calculated by the area under the thermodilution curve the fick method is one of the oldest method of determining the cardiac output this can also be used to determine blood flow to any organ the fick principle is simple and it is based on the amount of substance consumed or produced by the organ it says that the total uptake of or release of a substance by the organ is equal to the product of the blood flow to the organ and the arterial venous concentration difference of the substance so how to calculate the blood flow through organ by using fick method on the basis of the fick principle the blood flow to an organ can be calculated using a marker substance for this the following information should be known first the amount of marker substance taken up by the organ per unit time second the concentration of marker substance in arterial blood supplying the organ third concentration of marker substance in venous blood leaving the organ the most common use of fick method is to determine cardiac output in the determination of cardiac output the oxygen content of the blood are calculated before and after flowing through the heart from this we can derive the arterio venous oxygen difference the oxygen consumption for whole body is calculated from the venous sample and pulmonary artery sample by using the formula we can calculate the cardiac output this is an invasive technique but very useful the fick method is also used to measure blood flow to the kidneys as we know the fick method is essentially a conservation of mass principle it means for any substance 
the renal inputs and the renal outputs should be equal if the substance is not being used. Put simply, a non-metabolizable substance entering the kidney via the renal artery has two points of exit, one the renal vein and second the ureter. Paraamino hippurate or commonly called as PAH is freely filtered and it is not reabsorbed and it is secreted within the nephron. Therefore, this is used to determine renal blood flow. A radioactive compound is injected and the radioisotope provides a measure to construct the image of an organ. This image depends on the blood flow status of the organ. Thus, the image indicates the degree of blood flow. Imaging is done by gamma camera, PET or any other means. For example, technetium 99 is used to image blood flow to heart. It is also called as TC scan or SPECT. One can also study the effect of exercise test on blood flow to the heart. Another technique for blood flow measurement is positron emission tomography or PET in short. The word tomography means a technique for displaying a representation of a cross section through a human body in two dimensions. A three dimensional image can be created by combining the slices of 2D frames. The PET is a costly but highly efficient technique for measuring blood flow to almost any organ of the body. Therefore, the positron emission tomography or PET measures physiological function by looking at blood flow, metabolism, neurotransmitters and radio level dye. The positron emission tomography is based on physical principle of positron emission. As shown in the slide that some radioisotope substance when bombarded with electron, then they start emitting positrons. This substance when injected in human body goes to various organ and start emitting positrons. This substance have special affinity to particular organs, thus that particular organ only emit positrons. These positions are captured by an array of scintillating crystals of cameras placed all around the body. The scintillating crystals convert these positrons into photons, which is nothing but the normal light. This normal light is converted into electrical signal by phototransduction. This varying electrical signal creates an image in the computer. This slide shows PET scan of a pathological brain. Here it shows decreased blood flow throughout the brain. Since nose is outside the brain and there is circulation intact. Therefore, in the scan of head only the nose is visible which is called hot nose sign. This indicates poor intracranial blood flow. For this, technetium 99 is used. The PET can also be used to measure the microvascular perfusion. Electromagnetic flow meters are time-tested versatile tools for measuring flow of any kind. These are extensively used for research, diagnostic and interventional studies. This principle is simple. When an artery is kept in a magnetic field, the moving cell starts generating induced current. This magnitude of induced current depends on the velocity. Thus, the induced current is directly proportional to the blood velocity. The induced current is measured by a set of electrode kept across the artery. Therefore, to measure blood flow by this technique, we need to have exposed the artery. For human application, 
the miniaturized assembly of electromagnet and sensors is mounted on the tip of catheter and we can record blood flow at various places in heart, iota and pulmonary artery. The near infrared spectroscopy uses infrared light which is capable of penetrating the skin and the skull. It can reach significant depth that allows it to get absorbed by oxyhemoglobin and the returning light gets altered because of this. Therefore, the returning light quantifies the amount of oxyhemoglobin. The returning signal is analyzed by spectroscopy. Near infrared diffuse correlation spectroscopy, DCS in short, is an emerging technique for measurement of regional blood flow at the microvascular level. These measurements are useful to monitor the dynamic effects of exercise, drug treatments, environmental or physical manipulations on targeted micro-sized vascular areas. This slide shows the setup for near-infrared spectroscopy. Since the returning rays are disused and returned from local area, the technique measure microcirculation. I have described various techniques. The choice of techniques depend on the requirement or the diagnosis or the research needed. So there are techniques available for volume flow to measure the flow through artery or vein, to measure local vasculature or the microvasculature function. More reading will make you wiser to choose the appropriate technique. This slide provides an overview of some of non-invasive and invasive methods to measure blood flow to the various body organs and areas. All these techniques can be used for humans and animal studies. The blood flow in extremities is important physiological investigation. Limbs are spatial region because of the accessibility and therefore large number of techniques are available for them. Now we have come towards the end of discussion in the module. So I would like to summarize this whole module. The blood circulation includes heart and large series of connected vessels called arteries and veins. The velocity of blood varies in different vessels depending on pressures and diameters. Also, different organs need different amount of blood flow depending on their needs. So, studying blood flow becomes essential. It is an important tool for studying the effect of physiological variables or physiological variables like exercise, gravity or cognitive task on blood flow to the whole body or a particular organ. Also, the measurement is required for detecting the effect of drugs, transplantation and grafts. In general, by measuring blood flow, one can predict tissue functionality and tissue survival. Most commonly used techniques in non-invasive category are plethysmography and Doppler. The invasive techniques used to measure blood flow to individual organs include injection of radiolevel substances or radioisotopes and the organ is imaged by using PET or MRI or gamma camera. I hope you like the module and thank you for watching the video.